So this is the SC10 Shark V2 3D printer that happens to be able to print in dual colors and have a laser attachment. So I'm going to check it out and see if it's worth the $500 price point that they're asking for this. So let's get started. So as I'm opening up the box, let me go over how this printer is advertised. On the official LotMax website, it says that it is a 3-in-1 printer, which I'm assuming means it has a laser, it can print single color or dual color. But usually when you get something that can do all of the things, it can't do all of the things well. And that's basically what I'm making this video around, is just testing out the different functions of this thing and seeing what things are going to be worth it and if anything is lacking and you really shouldn't get the printer based on that feature. But we'll see. It looks like it comes really well packed with a user's manual right on top. So let's go through the first box labeled Toolkit. It has all the tools needed to assemble the printer along with the bolts, along with a bag full of spare parts. A power cable, a pair of red goggles so you don't hurt your eyes when using the laser, some clippers that come with every 3D printer, a short USB cable, some plastic parts for the spool holder, and a sharpened scraper. The next box is the bicolor printing setup, and this is basically just the wires, another spool holder, a filament runout sensor, some Bowden tube, and another extruder. And the last box is the laser kit. And this has some binder clips and the diode laser along with its control box. This printer does include two spools of PLA, so that's nice. There's also what looks like an old phone cable in here, this metal holder, and the printer's control screen. With all that stuff out, I can take the layer of foam off and get to the other parts. There's two sheets of wood that you can use the laser on for engraving a magnetic spring steel build plate. That way you can remove it when your print is done, flex it, and it just pops off. And here's the entire top half of the printer that is attached to the bottom half, so I need to remove this foam before I can take all of it out. So here it is all out of the box. It just needs to be bolted together. It looks like I forgot some foam parts underneath the bed, and I realized that the bed is really loose, along with the belt for the Y-axis being really loose, so I'll have to fix both of those later. To connect the top and bottom half, all we need are these four bolts. And with that done, I can fix the wiggliness in the bed. This is pretty simple to do. All you need to do is adjust these, and it will pull in the wheels a little bit more, making it tighter, and making the bed not wiggle anymore. And when it comes to tensioning the belt, all we need to do is loosen up this front piece. There's four bolts on it. And then I'm going to just take two fingers and hold this piece out with some tension on it and retighten everything. So there we go. And that's much better now. And with that done, I'm going to need to put the rest of the printer together. And I'm just going to fast forward through this and I'll slow it down if I run into any problems. All right, with everything all put together, it looks like it's working and I need to level it. And to level this printer, you do have to manually do it with some assisted bed leveling. These used to come with a BL Touch installed and then they had a attachment that you could install one separately and now they just come without any. So that's kind of annoying at this price point, but I'll make do and manually set this. So now that it's all set up, let's do a test print. I'm just gonna grab the Lucky Cat G code that came on the SD card that was supplied with the printer. and it looks like it printed with no problem. It over extruded some filament when it started off the print, making the little purge line that it does, but this isn't really a problem. So let me flex this plate and pop this off and see how the print actually turned out. So overall, it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of weirdness on the arm, and I don't know what settings this was even printing at, and the filament can have a major role in this. Usually the filaments supplied in these small rolls aren't anything special and not very good, but they will get you some usable results. And now that I know that this will at least 3D print properly, let's try out the laser engraver. So I just need to remove these two bolts to remove the entire print head. 
And to keep it out of the way, you just bolt it in up here. And in place of the print head, we're going to switch out to the laser. And this is held in with just two bolts, just like before. And then with the control box, I need to remove this foam that's covering up the connecting points so I can plug it in. Before plugging this in, make sure that your printer is off, because if you do plug this in while it is running, it will short out your main board and completely fry it, making the entire printer unusable. There's also a T-nut and screw on the control box that needs to be mounted to the frame. This will make it so you don't accidentally unplug this. I'm also going to be taking the build surface off and replacing it with a piece of wood using some binder clips to hold it in place. With all of that done though, you can turn the printer on and you can home your laser. So now for the kind of annoying part, you need to move your laser so it's cutting into the material properly. And when doing this, make sure that you have the red glasses on, seeing that just looking at this laser will damage your eyes. Using the control screen, you can move this up and down by one millimeter at a time or 10. But once you have it to your liking and you can move it around and it'll continuously burn the material, you can save this profile, it'll rehome itself and you should be ready to go. So for the first engraving, I thought I would upload my own logo and see how that came out. And that did not work. And this was just using the burn settings that are in the program by default. So I just messed with the settings a bit and slowed it down until it would actually start cutting. And these settings are so extremely slow, I thought I did something wrong. So I looked inside the SD card to see if there was any files for the laser, and there was. So I loaded one of those up, and here's how fast it actually goes. So as you can see, this is unbearably slow. And that means I did get my settings right, but this is way too slow for a laser engraver. And there's also no estimated time on the screen for when this is going to be done. So I set up a four hour time lapse and I needed more time. Seeing that this took a whopping four hours and 50 minutes to complete. And as you saw, this printed out line by line and there's no way to set this to do a trace. So that's why it takes so long to do. Along with the laser being pretty weak for doing this in the first place. Don't get me wrong, if you're making small things, it'll probably be much faster for you. And if you're cutting on to other materials like paper or cardboard, then it'll work a lot faster because those are easier to burn. So let me get the build surface back on here and try out the dual color print and see how that turns out. I have heard hit and miss things about a single nozzle using two filaments, and it's usually when it's two different materials. So if you use the same material but different colors, it usually works out fine. When this changes colors, it will purge the other color out. So what it does, it retracts the filament of whatever it was using last, and then pushes the other one in and prints this tower until it gets to the point where it's putting out the new color or material, and then it goes back over to the model. And it keeps alternating this until your print is done. And after about two hours of printing, we have our little multicolor low poly Bulbasaur. I do think this came out really well actually, with no color bleed that I can see. There was a little bit of a problem on the foot here, and you can see on the rest of the bottom that it wasn't as close as it could be to the bed, so I need to re-level the bed a little bit, and it should come out perfect next time. Well, I guess the tips of the ears are a little more yellow than green, but it might just be because they're so small. And here's the purge tower, which is all the wasted material to make this piece dual color. So when it comes to print quality, this printer does a great job doing dual or single color right out of the box. But to be fair, I've only printed these two models on this machine, and I haven't done any tuning or anything like that. I've just used default settings for the Bulbasaur, and the other one was a provided G-code. And like I said, I'm using the filament that came with the printer, which is usually not the best. Looking at the hardware of this printer, it has some pretty decent stuff, and it's set up really well. I like how it has two part cooling fans, when most printers come with one. Along with this removable touchscreen, I can see some people liking it, I don't really care either way. Along with it coming with filament runout sensors and dual gear extruders. Along with coming with a really nice magnetic build plate. But everything about the printer isn't all great. Like the laser being extremely underpowered and taking forever to just do a simple pattern on wood, and being limited to only roster images instead of being able to trace them in a vector. 
Also, not coming with auto bed leveling anymore is kind of a letdown. And honestly, I would forgo the laser for the auto bed leveling and the rest of the printing functionality of this printer. And it does only have one Z motor, which isn't a deal breaker, but it could use a second one. But looking at the main board, they wouldn't be able to put one in here without having to get a new main board. And as you can see, it has removable silent stepper drivers. So if you needed to upgrade them or if you wanted to replace them for any reason, you can. So this isn't really a review of this printer, it's more of a first look, along with my opinions of what you get for this $500 price point. I really don't feel that the laser adds all that much to this, and is more of a gimmick than anything else. And I'm sure this laser will work just fine for some people, or work perfectly for what they're doing. But if you want to do fast laser engraving, a dedicated laser is a must. When it comes to the normal 3D printing of this, it does a great job, along with the dual color. I'm assuming only with the same material, because it is one nozzle. And if you're wanting to use two different materials at the same time reliably, you're going to want something like an IDEX printer, which is two separate nozzles. As of recording this, on Amazon, they're actually offering $100 off of this printer, so it'd be $400 instead of five. And at that price point, it's a pretty decent buy, seeing that it's pretty easy to assemble, and it kind of just works out of the box. So it's really gonna be up to your budget and your needs. As an example, I'm going to solely be using this printer as a dual color printer, which is perfect for making small signs or things for labeling stuff. And from the stuff I've seen online, you can get really creative with it. But that's kind of the thing with 3D printing. It is just a tool. You still need to be creative and come up with ideas to make using it. But anyways, if you found this video to be helpful, leave a like. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment. And a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for helping support the channel. And if you want to be alerted to when I put out new videos, subscribe to my channel. I try to put out a new video every week. Well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.